good hello and thank you for tuning in to augustina frazier ministries where the word of the lord is a lamp unto your feet and a light into your pathway i am so delighted that you're tuning in to this series that i've been teaching on the 10 gates according to nehemiah chapter 3. and i completed the last six gates and today i will be completing the fountain gate and the water gate and then next week the lord will i will conclude with the final two but i'm delighted to be before you on this on today and my saturday sermon thank you for tuning in and thank you for your participation and thank you for your prayers this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it but let's get into the word because we know that the word of the lord is a lamp unto your feet and a light into your pathway well my theme scripture is nehemiah chapter 2 i mean yeah chapter 2 verses 11 through through 18 and then verse 20 so i'm gonna read the theme, the theme scripture and the theme of this uh series and it's been this is number four and we have one more left is the new beginnings and i think it's befitting because we're in a new year 2022 and i know that you all have planned a consecration and Bobby Fasten with your um, church, your organization, uh, made some change with diets, made a change with relationships, made a change completely. I know God put me in a position that radical changes were made for me. But even though this is a new beginning, the series that I'm talking about, it is also a birthing season. Uh, I tell you, I've been meditating on these two gates pretty much all week and you would not believe as I sat down this morning, the Lord gave me more revelation um, to understand it and more so towards the afternoon. So let's read the scripture. It is uh, chapter 2 of Nehemiah, verses 11 through 20. Actually, 11 through 18, then verse 20. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And I arose in the night, and this is Nehemiah, and I, and I some few men with me. Neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well into the dun port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down. The walls were broken down. And the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Say the gates were consumed with fire. Those are two important things to remember as we're doing these series. That he went, the Nehemiah and men went back to restore the wall, to rebuild the wall, and no, to restore the wall is because it was broken down, and to re rebuild the gates because the gates were burnt down. Then I went on. The, then I went to the gate of fountain and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then went I, I in the night of the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned. And the ruler knew not whether I went or what I did. And see, you don't always have to tell everybody what the Lord has given you. He just wants you to do it decently in order. And sometimes God puts us in positions where he put us in a season where we have to keep things just between you and God. And you got you to gotta know to do that. Last week, I talked about casting your pearls before people, before situations. Sometimes we put things out there too quickly and we're not ready for the income or the outcome of what you've shared. Joseph was a very good example. So he did not tell anybody. And let me continue to read. Then in verse 16, and, and the rulers knew not whether I went, there we go again, or what I did. Neither, neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor the priests, nor the nobles, nor the rulers, nor the rest that did the work. Verse 17, then said I unto them, ye see the distress that we are in. So God sees everything that he, you're in. He's seen what you've been going through, but trust him. Jerusalem lie waste, and the gates thereof are burnt down. Remember the gates, because the gates are the 10 things that I'm talking about. They were burnt down and with fire. Come and let us uh, build up the walls of Jerusalem, that we will no more 
be no more be a reproach. Then I told them, verse 18 of the hand of the then I told them of the hand of God which was good upon me. Say the hand of the Lord is upon me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Isaiah, and the Lord has anointed me to preach. It's also in Luke, but it's also in the book of Isaiah. Is the Spirit of the Lord upon you? And has He anointed you to do an assignment like He's doing Nehemiah? Has He anointed you to do a work? Has He anointed you to develop a business? Has He anointed you to a, a start a daycare or adoption agency or foster care because there's so many kids? Has He anointed you to do a rescue mission with all the things that's going on in the world? Remember those words. So He said they were burnt down with fire. So remember the gates. And I see something there. Other also prophetically the Lord's given me is kind of taking a twist what I have in my mind. So the gates were burnt down with fire. Hallelujah. And let us build up the walls of Jerusalem. This is Nehemiah giving instruction. And we will in in that we be no more a reproach. Then I told them that the hand of the Lord of God is upon you. And he, we read that. And as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. God said, Rise up out of that situation. He knows what you have gone through coming out the closure of this year, coming into a new year. He knows. So they strengthened their hands for, for this work, good work. Verse 20, then they answer I then I then answer I them and said unto them, The God of heaven, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Say he's gonna prosper prosper us in all areas this year. Therefore, we, his servant, will rise up, arise. God said, arise and build back up the things that God has told you to build back up. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. So he's saying, listen, what was in the past and what has happened, what was destroyed, what was burned down, the Lord said, you have no rights of it. It's, it's destroyed. It's in the past. And we talked about last week, the um, gate, Dun Gate, which represents where they used to throw all trash and rubbish. It even said, that one commentator said, that's where they uh, threw away the feces. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, mm. we come on behalf of your people. We come on and I humble myself before you. I humble myself, Lord. This has been a trying week for me, but I humble myself, oh God, to your word, Father, which is a lamp into your feet and a light into your pathway. I ask, oh God, that you allow me to decrease as you increase. Let your anointing flow out of my mouth, Lord. Let it be fire in my mouth. Let the anointing be there. Let the anointing go and destroy every yoke, everything that a person, that, that, that an individual under the sound of my voice is going through. And we ask, oh Lord, that you will send a word and that the word will be planted in their spirit, that they can see and be a light into their pathway. And those that come down the line to listen, Lord, let the anointing still reside because I feel your presence. And I can't thank you enough, Lord, for getting me through this week and getting our families through this week and getting people through this week in our nations and our cities and our state. We see the uh, COVID um, on the red band, but God, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And let us obey. Let us humble ourselves in the areas that we need to humble. And Lord, all carnality, all things that you're coming against, Lord, purge all of us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So we seal this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I already feel the anointing. Just reading the theme scripture, the Lord want me to reinforce a couple words. Hallelujah. He said, uh, Nehemiah said that they had a lot of distress on them. And God said he feels the distress, what you're going through, your family, people that you know, but he said he's with you. He said that, yes, there have been some gates that were burned down with fire. But he also said, yeah, they were supposed to be destroyed so he can rebuild. Because gates, we're going to talk about it briefly. And then we're going to talk briefly about the gates. I tell you, tonight is 15, 20 minutes. The gate, as I emphasize, a gate is an entrance. And it's an exit, too. But we're focused on the entrance. And these gates were torn down around Jerusalem. In Ezra, the temple was destroyed, so the walls were destroyed, and then the gates were burned. It's a reason why the enemy came after it as it did. He, he tore down the temple, and our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And I know some of you have been burnt, torn down with so much of cares of life, but God said he is rebuilding all that. Hallelujah. He's rebuilding the temple. He's rebuilding the outward in the inward of who you are. 
who you used to be, God said you will never be anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. This is a move of God. This is a purging. This is a season of change. And it's a season of birthing. Hallelujah. Ho shanda ko shanda in the mighty name of Jesus. But on the flip note, as I was reading and I felt the anointing when the Lord was this probing me in this while I was reading. He said that fire also mean that the fire of God is in every entrance. Oh, I've been teaching on this for the past three or four weeks. And this is the first time he brought to my mind to also display this information is that not only the fire destroys some things and, you know, it, and it took away, but there was new beginnings because God then rose up this this great man of God and he put he only had a select the people and so this season you can't only have a select the people in your in your path I know that you may be loved and there's many people that adore you but there's only a selected people that's going to be in that that core of what God wants you to do and he said you have to choose people wisely hallelujah you don't cast away the people that love you of course and friends and family but I'm saying in this work that God is getting ready to do in your life, you got to have a select the people. It's going to be a select the people. Just like Jeremiah, he had a select the people. For a season, he was by himself. But when God sent him in Jerusalem to do this assignment, he said it was distressing, meaning they, what they saw was distressing. So that doesn't mean this season going to be even easy. But I also know that these are the last days. So these are God is raising up the last day ministers, the last day prophets, the last day of um, apostles, teachers, and pastors. Hallelujah. And evangelists. So you got to be ready for this next move. You got to have selected people. Quit denouncing alone time. I keep hearing people say, I'm alone. I'm lonely. I don't do the word alone, alone, but you may be alone for a season because the Bible said that the Holy Spirit will never leave you nor forsaken you. Hallelujah. So you got to make sure that you have that a relationship with God, that God can minister to your soul, that he can talk deep with within you hallelujah so you can hear what the spirit is saying that's why you in a season like you're in even though you got people around you you're in a long season because he's speaking to your soul he ain't setting how you look or whatever he's looking at the heart and he's talking to the heart and the mind of men whatever god is saying to the heart he's saying it to the mind so he said, let this mind be in you as it was in Christ Jesus. And that's where God is taking us. He said, I got to renew this mind. Let this mind. Because that's why these people, that's why the people of God went through, they went through. Because God had to tear down all kinds of idolatries, all kinds of form and fashion. He said, denying the power, get, denying the power thereof. It was more of a form and fashion. And God said, that is not where he is today. He's really, he's really grip, gripping people and equipping people to be ready for the coming of the Lord. He's regrouping people and equipping people so that we can win souls to Christ, that we can help people um, come to God and we can help people get refreshed. Those that may have backslided or even in the church and just need a refresh. He is equipping us to get people ready for that great day. Hallelujah. But great things are coming. That's what God is saying. Uh, so he said, you only going to have a select of people in your, in your core. No, you won't get rid of the people around you because you can't do that. Because we are fitly joined together. And you don't know when you're going to need your brother and sister. But right at this season, what he's doing, he said, there's a core of people that's going to be in the midst. Uh, I always look at uh, David. When he was in the ministry and doing the work of God as a king, he had that he had Jonathan that was one of his core people, and then he got all the uh, uh, warriors behind him. But he had that one person, uh, and then we look at Paul. Paul had Barnabas, Timothy, um, and Ananias. Uh, not Ananias, but Barnabas, Timothy. And, and, and when he went through his, and Silas, thank you, Lord. And when he went through the different changes, God gave him a companion, a companion for that season. So God said, you got to be careful how you keep pleading and asking God to send somebody in your way. You don't want everybody in your core. Even Jesus had the 12 disciples. But when it was time to go up before he was, um, 
before he was um, arrested. Uh, hallelujah. He was by himself, but the father was there with him. Uh, so God said, get into your word and learn the word of God, which is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. Everybody keeps saying they can't see, but God said he keeps giving you the word uh, because he said he sent his word uh, to heal us of all of our diseases, uh, meaning help us to life experience. Uh, because in the Old Testament, it's a lot of storytelling, uh, but it's a lot of truth in there. Uh, but I wanted to slow down a little bit. Uh, there's another thing that God was showing me. Uh, he said, rise up uh, in verse 18. Jeremiah, I mean, Nehemiah told him, let's rise up and go build. God said, when are you going to rise up and build? Uh, when are you going to trust God and what he has given you? Uh, and then he said, the Lord will strengthen you. That's what he said in verse 18 of chapter 2 of Nehemiah. He said he's going to strengthen you for that work. Uh, Sometimes I'm in fatigue and tired because of the demands of me and my, the work that I do in the hospital. And sometimes I be so exhausted, but it be up here because you got to have this mindset to help people through difficult times, make choice, make decisions and critical decisions and sit and listen, listen. But the Lord said, even though you have that exhaustion, I will give you strength in your body because I got work outside the hospital and I got work inside the hospital, but I got work coming to you on the outside of the hospital. So you got to get ready for what God is saying. So are you being strengthened through this word? Are you being prepared for this word? So I looked at um, verse 20. Verse 20, he said, the God of heaven, meaning God going to open heaven up and he's going to prosper you. Say, I will prosper this year. It may be some trials and tribulation, but I'm going to prosper this year. <clears throat> God said, quit looking at what you don't have and what you're getting ready to get. It's not about the material thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's nice to have five, fine things, but God said, that's not where he is. But he said, if you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desires of your heart. So just a recap, because I'm almost finished, because I'm going to do the fountain and the water gate together. That's the two I'm doing today, and I'm so excited. I just pray I'm out able to pour out to you like the Lord gave it to me. But just a recap, I spoke on the 10, I've been speaking on the 10 gates. So far, I completed six. Go back to the previous uh, uh, YouTube uh videos that I have been ministering on and it gives you the the spiritual what the context of the Bible what it was talked about at that time but it also I give you the natural because I said in this season right now in the beginning of this year God is dealing with the human the the humanistic of who we are yes he's dealing with the spirit but he's dealing with the humanistic he's trying to get our minds ready for this battle hallelujah he's trying to get us fit in our body that's why I say have you changed what changes did you make not only spiritually but to the natural side of you have you changed your diet have you given up soda have you given up fast food have you stopped all this um, frying the food have you cut back on your sweets i mean it's time to get prepared have you have you changed your diet to more vegetables and fruit have you gotten more to bake foods and you know baking and, and putting food in crop pot? it's just a natural thing i'm giving you because i'm a firm believer that it's not all spiritual you gotta have a balance and where we are going today you gotta take care of yourself so anyways these 10 gates Represent. I'm going to go back up to the top and I just talk about these, these, these powerful scriptures. The 10 gates uh, represents seats of authority. See this, the gate is the entrance into us. And it, these 10 gates were the entrance into the wall and into the Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was a metaphor of a body or a synagogue, just like our bodies as a temple of the Holy Ghost. And we have 10 openings within the natural, just like it was 10 openings in the spiritual, the walls and the 10 gates on the wall. And these gates represent authority. Hallelujah. They represent something coming in, but they represent authority. And you have authority in both ears too. Two eyes, two nostrils, a mouth, your navel, your private air, and your buttocks equals 10 all together. And God is saying, you got to be careful because I'm re he's rebuilding every entrance within your temple, every entrance into a church, every entrance into a um, business. He's rebuilding it all because he said he wants us to properly take things in. Hallelujah. And as I said on last week, 
The dung gate is a, a gate that when we throw away things that we don't need. And God said this year, he is not going to let anything sit in your spirit dormant. If it's not of him, it's going to come straight through you. And I used the metaphor and I didn't want to be too vulgar of a natural body. Every time we eat something, we're supposed to have a discharge. Whenever you eat a solid food or a solid meal, you're supposed to have a discharge. And it's the same way God said, whatever you allow to come into these 10 openings within you, and if it's not of God, it's going to go through your cleansing and it's going to go to out the gate, the dung gate, which is your buttocks area where you have your waist. Pardon me because I don't mean to be any vulgar or anything, but I've got to give it to you like the Lord given to you. So he also said at the gates, the gates is wisdom. It utters wisdom. Hallelujah. The gate is our entrance. We listen for wisdom. We see wisdom. We talk wisdom. We feel wisdom. The five senses is going to be powerful. And that comes from uh, Proverbs 1 and 21. And the gate seats of uh, authority comes from Ruth chapter 4 verse 1. And the gates represents judges and uh, uh, officers, meaning there's going to be a lot of uh, people in authority that's going to be really standing for justice. And it says these gates administrate justice through, through uh, judges and officers. That's in Deuteronomy chapter 16 verses 18 and the gates represents a council hallelujah second chronicles 18 through 19 please write those scriptures down and read at your at your early convenience so today we're talking about the gate the fountain gate and the water gates and I was reading I said to be honest I'm going to consolidate those together and I'm just going to give you some bullet points and I heard the Lord speak it so clearly in my heart and he said there's four things and of course it's more but it's four things that we must focus on about the fountain gate and about the uh, uh, water gate and the fountain gate and the water gate the Lord said in the natural is our mouth hallelujah our mouth we got to be careful what we speak and we got to be careful what we take in um, because like I said you if you eat the wrong type of food it's going to destroy your body eventually. It's the same way what we are taking in, what we are hearing and we are speaking or what we're taking in that we are eating. It's a form of eating. If you sit at this table right now where I'm sitting, I'm feeding you the word. So you're eating it. So it's going through your mouth. It's, it's the fountain gate and it's the water gate. But the fountain gate in the natural, it says, according to scripture, the fountain gate was a southern tip facing the east of the wall of Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, and the east gate that led out from the pool of Siloam to the king's garden and stairs that went down the eastern slope. And that was in Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 15, and also Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 37, where they consecrated and celebrated the uh, fountain gate. Now, when I looked at the fountain gate, and I'm going to talk about the fountain gate as well as the water gate, I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about the water gate. Now, the water gate, it faces the east too. And see, that's a direction when the Lord come back, he's coming from the east. It's something powerful for the east. And it faced, it faced the west gate in, on the wall of Jerusalem, faces the east, face the east, south of the current, old, south of the old city walls. Nehemiah 3 and 26. It was near the start of a tunnel waterway that was um, fed by a spring, uh, spring of water. And that was in Joshua 15 verses 7 and 18, chapter 18 verse 16. And or Chronicles chapter, uh, second Chronicles chapter 32 verses 30 and 33 verses 14. And that eastern wall was on the south end apparently was abandoned and, and, and a new wall was built further west, turning the southern section into the more, more of a tail. The new wall excluded the tomb of David. And I'm just giving you a little history and the most of the water tunnel that, fed, that fled, fed through the pool of Shalom by the Dung Gate. Remember I told you the Dung Gate was a waste, the place was waste things that we shouldn't have in our body, you need to get rid of it. Things you shouldn't have in your ears, things you shouldn't have in your mind, you need to put in a done gate. You gotta go back and listen to the, um, read, listen to the scripture, read, listen to the video be, um, broadcast because I'm not gonna go back. And it says also, but the narrow confines included the upper house of the king, the house of the high priest, and the ascent to the armory. 
after the wall was built, and this is the saying, after the wall was built, and Ezra, re, Ezra, after the walls were rebuilt, the protection came back up. Ezra read to the people the law from the square by the water gate, and that was in Nehemiah chapter um, 8, verse 1. And see, Ezra was a powerful book. Go back and read it. I'm not going to go there because there's so much that I would go into, but I'm really almost done, and I told you it's going to be brief tonight. Now, the fountain gate was a sign of restoration. Uh, Zechariah foretold the fountain, fountain gate as, was a sign of restoration. It said, on that day, there should be a fountain open to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem for their sins and for uncleanness. Zechariah 13, verse 1. So I need you to remember these key words. There's four key things on here. There's going to be a season of restoration through the fountain gate. And think about it. Fountain, gate, uh, fountain when you drink water and you think about a fountain, fountain is a sprung up. It constantly brings forth. It's like when you go to the mall, sometimes you go in the mall and they have like a fountain. You go over to the pennies where you throw pennies in and sometimes they have a fountain where the water is just flowing. Fountain means something consistently. Consistently. It's consistently. It, it, it represents overflow. It represents overflow. It represents cleansing. It represents um, purification. It represents so much. And that's why I said this fountain gate is so phenomenal. I'm not going to go as deep into it, but I'm just going to give key points. You can read Zechariah 13, verse chapter 13, verse 1. It said that the fountain gate was a sign of restoration. What do restoration mean? Rest in me, restoration means there's going to be a lot of restoring. It's going to be a lot of things God going to pay back because God saw the sacrifices you made. He saw how, how hard you work for your family. He saw the sacrifices that you did for your, for your family and neglected yourself. And I know sometimes when people get older, they say, I never did any. But God said restoration is coming. That means he's going to restore a lot of things. He said he's going to restore what the canker worms ate up. Hallelujah. It's a lot of restoration coming. And then I want to read a little bit. Nehemiah went by night to observe the broke down conditions of the walls and the gate of Jerusalem. He then moved directly to the fountain gate. That's where he went. Nehemiah chapter, four, chapter 2 verse 14. And then <clears throat> it said it is time to move. This is what God was saying when he moved. And that's why I felt the anointing when I was reading the theme scripture. It is time to move the fountain gate to seek God for restoration of his covenant and promises to restore back to you. That's what Nehemiah said. He said, restore back to Israel. It is time to pray for the holy land to become holy again. Hallelujah. Meaning where the, where the temple was destroyed, that land was uh, desecrated. It was just really messed up. And when they went back... <clears throat> It was seasons and periods of time where God chose different kings to go back and restore this and restore that. And he, unfortunately, his, his assignment was to restore the walls of Jerusalem and to rebuild back the gates. But this was powerful, um, what he wrote. He said, the fountain gates is time to seek God for restoration. He said, so that's the second thing. That's the first one, restoration. Have you sought God for restoration? When he went out there in chapter uh, two, the verses I read through 11 through 20, he sought the Lord first, and then he got permission from those of authority. So before you do something, God said things got to be done decently in order. Have you sought out and got knowledge of what you're trying to do? Have you got the proper authority? Did you get the right permits? Did you get the right letters? Did you get the, the right things? When King De uh, Cesarus and, Ezra, and um, uh, Ezra, he had to get a letter from the king to go and go back into Jerusalem and despite, just look at the, 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 uh, the rubbish of the temple. Look how the structure was. Have you gotten permission from God what you're doing? Do you have instructions? And is it lining up with the word? Did you research and get knowledge? Because everything is not spiritual. Did you, get the, did, the, did you get the knowledge so you have the wisdom how to apply the knowledge? So <clears throat> Nehemiah said, he said, 
Have you sought the Lord for restoration in of his, his covenant and promises? How that Koshanda to restore Israel, to restore you. Have you looked at the covenant agreement that you received from God? We talk about the fountain and the water gate. Have you sought the Lord and have God put the right people in your life because it's not all spiritual. He gonna use men and women to help you with these things. Have you made the right connections? And if you haven't, you need to seek the Lord. Have you prayed? And then he said here, this is what he was saying in his word. Have you took time to pray? Hallelujah. He said, man must also pray and not faint. Hallelujah. He said, trust in the Lord in all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways have you acknowledged God that he directed you. Have you sought the Lord through prayer? Hallelujah. He said, seek the Lord with prayer and supplication. Have you sought the Lord with a fervent prayer? Hallelujah. Have you, he said, in all that getting, get an understanding. Yes, you can read the word. You can research and go to the government and research the plan for your business or for a government funding, whatever it may be. I hear that in my spirit. But have you sought the Lord out in prayer to make sure this is what he wants you to do? Because you don't know who getting ready to sow a thousand here, a million here. How did it go? Shunda. I remember I was, um, and then I'm going to get back to the word because I'm almost done. Remember, that's number two. So I remember a situation. It was in 2004, and I was really going through. I had my two young children. I went through a, a, a transition with my ex-husband at the time, and I was really seeking the Lord. I was like, I don't know what to do. And I was blessed. I, would, I received a check in the mail by the government, and it was for $95,000. But I had a dream the night before that I'm going to receive $100,000. That's why I said, you got to get an understanding. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, whoa, this is going to be wonderful. But it was a test. Hallelujah. And I received an internal revenue check, and it was legit. I called. Secret Service all called me. It was really weird. It's, it was a movie thing. My son likes to say, that was a movie, Mom. Well, it happened to me. So I waited like two, three weeks and I took it to the bank and my people that know me, they said, okay, Miss Ray, we put it in there and see if it, if it clears. If it's not, then we'll just tell you what to do. I said, because I don't know, I got this, I verified it. So the two days later, they said it wasn't a good check. So the bank called me. They said, we know you, Miss Frazier, but this is who you have to call. So when I called it, it was secret service. I, I wasn't allowed to go back to my home. It was a scary period for me. And all I know is that I was escorted down to the federal building in Michigan off of Michigan Avenue. And I was taken into this building and I was escorted by two secret service. And they took me into this big room and it looked like it was um, like the president room. It was a big room and it had all the uh, uh, flags and everything from representing the nation and then finally this man came in and he started talking to me and I had tears in my eyes I said I haven't done anything and, they, and he looked at me he started clapping his hand he said congratulations he said actually your name was picked through all these multiple uh, uh, internal revenue checks going out we're trying to find out who is doing fraudulent things in-house and he said, if you had spun a dollar of that check, you would have been under, and he showed me the check. He said, but you passed the test. He said, we, we're so sorry. We broke you down. We uh, frightened you. He said, but we had to use different citizens from different states. But see, God told me I was going to get a check for $100,000. And see, you got to get it. Under, I'm giving this example because it says in all that getting understanding, I did everything that I was supposed to do and I didn't touch anything and I was in need of financial help. And so anyways, and then it went from one extreme and I was sobbing. I said, man, this is not a good thing to do to a woman that's going through things with two wonderful sons. And he said, oh, we know your whole background. They told me about my background. It was kind of eerie. Like my son, this was a movie thing. So then this gentleman came in and he, he, he patted me on my shoulder. He said, we got to take you to one more room so you can sign off everything. And it was a fast. It was a real thing. It was, it was, it was scary. And he came in, this African-American man came in before it was Caucasian man. And he said to me, he said, don't be dis dismayed. He said, I've been doing this for many years. He said, Miss Frazier, I've seen people so money like this into uh, ministries that you're doing. Because I was doing, at the time I was doing it, 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 it is a breakthrough crusade service where we did it for two nights in Michigan and it would just be all kinds of nonprofits and organizations that came together where we did a, a healing and deliverance in many forms. It wasn't just all preaching, but you know, counseling and all this stuff. So anyways, and he said, I just want to encourage you. He said, the Lord, no, he didn't say the Lord. He said, you're going to get, you're going to be sown into just what you experienced today. 
He said, just don't be, and I heard the anointing of him. And of course, it's been many years. It's been about 15 years and I have not seen that type of money, but I believe God. But what I'm saying to you in all that getting, get an understanding because this is restoration season. So I'm going to move down a little further. Okay. This was um, from, uh, da, 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 where? John 7 and uh, chapter 7 verses 37 and 39, the New Testament, the application of foundation of, 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 uh, of the fountain gate. The fountain gate here was the pool of Siloam to, and it pointed to the Mas Mas uh, Messiah blessing, the uh, Messiah blessing of the Holy Spirit work in the life of the believer. So this here fountain gate, according to St. Uh, John verse chapter 7 verses 37 through 39 you have to read it at your own time it talked about um the fountain gate being next to the pool of Siloam, which represented the blessing of the holy spirit at work and it's also said the application is seen in the feast of the tabernacle in the special ceremony called the the um right of the water drawing powerful and then it also said the jewish tradition states that the ceremony took place each of the seven days of the feast you need to read about that i'm not going in there. I, I i got overwhelmed when i read that and then it also said this ceremony is setting of what jesus said on the last day that the great day of the feast jesus stood and cried out and saying if anyone be if anyone thirst let him come to me and drink he who believe in me as the scripture has said out of the heart will flow rivers of water hallelujah and it said and um then i'm gonna read a little more but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom he who those believe in him and re would receive so i want to pause there god was speaking about the holy spirit and he also said out of the hearts will flow rivers of living water meaning being holy spirit holy ghost or holy spirits feel in a day that i was um, born again in 19 84 I was baptized in the name of Jesus and I received the gift of the Holy Ghost and that's how we stated and a lot of people say Holy Spirit which is the same thing Jesus was saying here if you thirst and thirst after me and you, you if you thirst after me and you drink after me if you believe um, out of your belly out of the heart will flow rivers of water meaning being spirit filled and I just want to encourage you that's number two in this season not only restoration but number two read it after me many people are going to become holy ghost feel meaning the spirit of god that was uh, that god gave up on the cross descended into heaven is the spirit that he set down that we can have the same spirit living within us and also as a comforter so he was saying point two point one is restoration this is the season this is what it's going to be like this year. It's going to be glorious. Point two is going to be the spirit of God is going to be heavy. And all you got to do is begin to start praising God and worshiping God. And you can become spirit filled just by listening to this broadcast. Um, that's number two. It's going to be a flow, a river flow of the anointing, which represents the Holy Spirit. And then I want to go down and I'm almost finished. Acts 2, Acts 2 chapter 1 through 4. And verse 18 and verse 18 says on the on and my in on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out my pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall be prophesying so I want to turn to Acts 2 real quick normally I don't do this but I want to read it because it's so powerful Acts 2 and I need you to read this behind me remember I told you last week line upon line precept upon precept I know I'm rushing a little bit, but I like to be within the confinement of the time that I was instructed no more than 15, 20 minutes. And I know I go over some time, 30 minutes, but it says here, and I'm going to take my glasses off. Now, this was a day of Pentecost chapter two, verse one through four. This is what God is saying. Point three is going to be like the day of Pentecost. Point one was restoration. Repeat it after me. Restoration. Point two was the, um, Holy Spirit is going to flow from your heart, meaning being spirit filled. And point three is going to be like the day of Pentecost. It's going to be powerful. This is what the Lord gave me. So one through four and then 18. So one through four says this, this is the day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. So you're going to be on one accord. And God has made this world in some aspect one accord. 
um, and I won't go over there. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, say a sound from heaven, as a, as a rushing mighty wind. And, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So the anointing gonna fill your house even when I God speak. The anointing of God, his presence, is going and it's coming, coming from heaven. It's gonna fill your house and it's gonna be mighty and it's gonna fill it. And listen to this on verse three. And there appear unto them clover's tongue. Hallelujah. Clover's tongue is representing, thank you, Jesus, divided. Clover's tongues, like as of fire, and it shall and it's set upon each and every one of them. So I know the anointing is sitting upon you. Clover's tongue means the uh, Speaking in tongue, and it's set upon them. Hallelujah! And verse four, and they were they were all filled, filled, say filled, filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! And begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Hallelujah! So I was filled with the Holy Ghost at the age of 18, December 2000, December 1984. So God said, this is a season. There's going to be an outpour of the of flowing of the Holy Spirit from the heart of men and women. But there's going to be an outpour of the Holy Ghost and it's going to come forth and it's going to be powerful and anointed and it's going to fill everyone's house, meaning your temper, your natural body, but it's also going to come into your home. You will never be the same. And once you, and let me say this, once you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost or be filled with the Holy Ghost, you will always have it the rest of your life up until the rapture or to the Lord remove you through, uh, death. So he said they were all filled. So I want to encourage you, get you and your family, get you and your friends and anoint your home by prayer. And you all begin to praise and worship the almighty God and start calling on the name of Jesus because there's no other name because this is what's coming. That's point three. Let me close with um, 18. And then it says, and on my servant and on my hands, I will pour out to those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. So the point three is going to be prophecy. Point three, huh, Goshanda. I'm just so excited about God because you never know how you're going to pour it out. I studied to show myself who rightly divide the word and God just manifested like he won't because it's not about me. But the next um, point that's going to be throughout this year is prophecies. But listen to me, it's going to be a lot of false prophets. But you got to know that it's God when God is sending a word through the word of God, through a man or woman, hallelujah, prophecy, sometimes through prayer, sometimes through uh, um, fasting. You get it in many different ways, but you got to have it. Uh, you, the prophecies have to line up with the word of God. So that's point three. The first one going to be because of the fountain in the water gate, hallelujah, is restoration. The next one is the... God is going to fill the hearts and it's going to flow. The Holy Spirit is going to flow like a river of water. Point three is going to be prophecies. Hallelujah. And the last one, life and death is in the power of the tongue. We talk about the fountain in the water. Proverbs 18, verse 21. The tongue has the power of life and death. And we're going to conclude with this. Listen, God was saying to me, and thank you, Lord, you're so good to me that we have to be careful what we speak out of our mouth because a fountain in the water represents the mouth. You can speak some things that's contrary to God and you will speak life. In the beginning of Genesis, God said he just spoke and things happened. So God want me to tell you, you have to be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Google that scripture. Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to rap. I don't have it written down. If you Google it and put K KJV, King James Version, the scripture will come up. You got to be careful what you're allowing to come into you, your 10 gates. We talked about eight so far. You got to be careful what we allow to come into these gates because you can speak something that is not of God. And that's why I said the dung gate 
is going to be so critical this year. Once you receive something in these gates and it's not a God, it's going to go through the dung gate, which is your butt ex, and you're going to have a discharge. Because God said, this ain't the season when he's going to allow you to be hindered because he loves everyone and he's getting ready to sow into everyone. It says, in those last days, the handmaids and the servants, is going. God is going to pour out his spirit upon them and they shall prophesy. So the prophetic movement is here. It's even greater. And people say, well, it's always been. No, but it's a different type of movement. This is the movement according to the scriptures. Study the last days. Study the end times. And you'll see what I'm saying about the prophetic movement. So I want to close with this. Be careful what you say. Because the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. And the fountain and the gate water is our mouth. What we take in and what we dispute. He said it's not what goes out of you. It's what goes in you that destroys you. That's what the scripture said. And then it also says, um, it talks about the tongue. Read the book of Proverbs. Boy, read that book because you're going to get some taming, some taming lessons about this mouth and this tongue. That's what keep me in check. I read the book of Proverbs and it got so much wisdom, but it's painful sometimes because it talks about your mouth. So God is saying, be careful what you say. He said, out of the same mouth comes blessings and then cursing. So God blesses us to say things, then we curse it. We got to be careful who we listen to and even the folks that we're around because everybody don't have the best interest and don't let everybody pour into you. Ladies, don't let everybody pour into you. Don't let every man pour in you. Men, don't let every woman pour into you. You got to even be careful. You know, you have to be careful quote unquote minister. If it doesn't line up with the word, don't you allow that to go in your spirit. I had to, um, the, yesterday I was uh, watching something was really a powerful movie and, um, there was a point in there I had to ask the Lord to cleanse my spirit from it. And I felt it go through me, not in the natural, but in the spiritual. And it went into the done gate. I told you, God said he's not going to let it happen. And I want to say to you, I had a rough week this week. It was messing with my emotions and my feelings. And I said, Lord, give me peace. And even though I was going through these things, it was just testing trials that you had to deal with. Everybody deal with it on jobs and whatever. And I was, it, I just was experiencing. But I could tell you one thing about God and his word. He reminded me about the Dungay. He said, Augustina, you may be dealing with that right now, but you got to, you got to discharge that out of your spirit. Hallelujah. The word is so powerful. So I immediately discharge that and ask, and I do a cleansing prayer when I do things like that. I just real something simple in my heart. Cleanse me from every unclean spirit. I just say it. And I name the different things. And I said, cast it back into the pit of hell where it comes from, never to return to myself, my sons, my family, friends, and future family friends. And I seal it in Jesus' name. So you got to know how God deals with you. You have to learn the word so you can practice that word on a daily basis. So I hope you were blessed with this on today. It was spirit filled. I felt the anointing. I still You'll feel the anointing, but I want to thank you for tuning in to Augustina Frazier Ministry, where the word of the Lord is a lamp to your feet and a light into your pathway. I want to thank you for sowing seeds, sowing through prayers, sowing through um, love offerings, sowing through fasting, sowing through kind words, sowing through fasting at times for me. Some people say, I fast for you. Thank you, Jesus. Allow the Lord to lead you, but I, I'm just so humble. And that's one thing I say, you know me, I'm humble about things because I know if it wasn't if it wasn't for the Lord who's on my side, where would I be today? And I'm so grateful to God. But thank you for tuning in. And I tell you, encourage someone to tone into these uh, uh, YouTube channel of, my, of the teaching that the Lord has given me because I can't take any credit. And I just want to close with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're so grateful on today for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for this opportunity and this time to share the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for being there and sticking closer than a friend for us. Thank you for purging us and purifying us. And thank you for allowing us to know the four things that's coming this year. Restoration. Hallelujah. Um, the flow of the anointing, meaning the water of the Holy Spirit, and then prophecies, and then also we need to be careful about our tongue. We, we've been forewarned, so we got to put it in our, our um, Bible, in our brain, and remind ourselves. But I ask the Lord that you would touch the hearts and minds of people, those that need healing right now. We pray complete healing and restoration to the body, soul, mind, and spirit. We ask that you bless those that's laboring in the hospitals, dealing with this COVID and all the institutions that they have to deal with hands-on. We pray for their covering. We pray for the government. We pray for all our families. We pray for our children. We pray for our finance. We pray for our decisions. We pray for our businesses, ministries, and all, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. And we seal this in Jesus' name. Thank you again for tuning in. And I am delighted and I'm honored to be 
the minister of the gospel for Augustine and Frazier ministry and keep this ministry in prayer. We love you and we thank you with the love of God in Jesus name. Amen. Be blessed.